all above the ten land of five hundred. <laughs> if it's above five hundred, it's not thrifty. Just take it all. Just just literally wait. It it's yeah. yours. Just, just, <laughs> just it's open above five hundred, it's not considered thrifty. I am Tadiwa Rusike and I am on a quest to find out more about the culture of thrifting that I love so much. On my journey, I have talked to different thrift store owners. I found out how the shift to online platforms has changed the culture and possibly gentrified it. Because while thrift shopping may have once been on the to-do list of people in poverty and otherwise in tight budgets, a rise in economic conscious thinking and the tempting price tag of second-hand goods has caused young people like myself to head to their nearest thrift stores. The inception of thrifting was like that was that was how it came about. Just a person having like looking good at like a hundred rand, but still looking like a million rand. You find a fit, you know what I'm saying, or you find a jacket from a certain place, and you're like, wow, this is so beautiful. That was once a loved jacket and you wear it and you give it love yourself. And then that element brings out the whole aura of like, I'm getting something that, that looks very much exclusive. And the fact that someone gave that away, not in a sense where I'm gonna throw, throw it away or burn it, but I'm gonna, you know, just like give it away. And then someone sees it and like, okay, this is some really nice steeds, maybe rock it, or let me just like alter it and stuff like that. My love for thrift stems from my love for fashion. I can remember when I was younger, there was this channel called The Fashion Network and the channel used to air runway shows at the whole day. I'd watched that for longer than I should have, honestly. And there was also the Style Network channel where there were shows like Jersey Licious, Kimura Life in the Fab Lane and How Do I Look. And most of these shows are centered around fashion and people that dress well. And for as long as I can remember, in my opinion at least, my parents have always been very stylish and I would see them dress well and often a lot of these clothes are now in my closet and things that I took from them, like my mom's blazers and my dad's shirts are things that I wear often. So I think my love for thrift really started when my parents would take me to Zim for the holidays. They're both immigrants from Zim and in Zim flea markets are very popular and there's this one specific one called Mpeza Namo and they would let my sister and I get anything we'd want and we would shop a lot and the things there was so cheap we would leave in pizza and Amo with a lot of clothes because a lot of the things that would find there we would get them for as little as one dollar charities in first world countries collect unwanted or donated clothes clothes that are not retailed are sold to textile merchants these merchants collect the unwanted clothes and take them to a sorting plant at these sorting plants garments are sorted according to quality and type and then put into bales these are known in Zimbabwe as Mabero. These bales are put into shipping containers and are shipped to the recipient countries, one of them being Zimbabwe. The bales are then taken to flea markets like Mpeza Namo. There's no escaping the fact that the fast fashion industry is one of the world's biggest polluters. Although many brands are looking at becoming more environmentally and ethically responsible, fully sustainable fashion can still be difficult to discover if you don't know where to look. When you thrift, you make the whole process of clothing production longer. Because with fast fashion, the whole process of producing clothing has become faster. And because there's a lot of trends and brands make clothes quickly and then those clothes are not in trend within a few months, people often want to throw them away. But then, because of thrifting, people will bring the clothes that they don't want anymore to a thrift store or a charity shop and you get to buy them. So it's more environmentally friendly and basically you're just thinking of the future while looking out for your pockets as well. As consumers try to reduce their impact on the environment, the circular economy is becoming more important. Lately, this innovation has come to the world of clothing and online shopping where there is a growing market for second-hand goods. Re-commerce or reverse commerce is the future of fashion. It represents the digitization of second-hand or thrift stores. The model gives second life to used or out-of-season goods through e-commerce supply chains. My name's Di Westcott and the name of my shop is The Nearly New Shop. I like the shop 
for many reasons. Um, it's been going for 22 years now, and as we watch the world change, it becomes more and more important that recycling, reusing, um, and recreating things out of what we've already got is pretty important. When we started all those years ago, all we had were flyers. Um, you might not have even heard of flyers, but we used to put flyers all over Grahamstown. We have employed people to um, stand outside shops and put the flyers um, under windscreen wipers. And then we had posters everywhere. Um, but now we've got Facebook and um, Instagram, which we use regularly. And it's wonderful, it goes out all over the world, really. And it means that we can not only advertise what stock we've got, you know, sales are on and new stock coming in, but also the whole recycling process. In recent years, apps such as Instagram have made shopping your feed a near seamless experience. This has spawned an endless stream of brands such as Area Code that only exist on the app. Welcome to Area Code Day 1. I go by the name of Miss Mel. And I go by the name of Blue. I go by the name of Devoho. And I'm Mishan. I feel like these other pages and other people realize that the thrifting culture is growing. And they have to penetrate it somehow. Yeah. And the only way they can do it is like resell for that. And just draw people so exclusivity. Like exploiting the culture like that. I get it. Like, you know, people need the platform to sell other things because they're at certain places where they can't sell it to the people that they, you know, are around. Because like there's other places maybe like there's no people don't drift. You know what I mean? There's other neighborhoods or other places where people don't really, you know, think about thrift like that. My name is Reg Arnold and my partner at the, on the other side is Brian Nolan. We work for a charity shop, SPCA, which deals only in donated goods, which are sold, and any money that is made is goes directly to the SPCA. Well, we, we advertise a lot of our merchandise online as well, especially if it's a very good product and um, whoever's interested in it would be saving a lot of money. Price is very important. That's one of the main factors. You um, can't overcharge. You can't. You can't do a business where you are trying to make a big profit and not do a good turnover. Um, you know, you really have to think about instead of the stuff sitting, the things sitting in the shop, not being sold. Rather, price it so it'll be in and out fairly quickly. But I always say to people, if they um, have something very special, like a leather jacket or a wedding dress, they must give me an idea of what they hope to get back. And sometimes I have to be blunt and say, I can't come close to that. Um, it's an old, quiet joke of ours here that people get quite emotional about their clothes. So they'll, they'll come in and say, I wore this to my daughter's wedding 10 years ago, and it cost me a lot of money. But we know it's something that nobody wants now. So we also have to be very diplomatic and say, I don't think it'll sell just, you know, at the moment. It's not like we have that uh, formal method of like, okay, so we're gonna add this percentage, what, 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 it's just, sometimes we just add 10 bucks, you're like, ah, it's just add 10 bucks. So sometimes it's like, ah, we can sell it for the same price, like, when you go to force. Um, um, yeah, we just make it like, Reggie's volunteer work for the SPCA runs as a form of social enterprise where all income from thrift sales are used in accord with the SPCA's stated charitable purpose. Diane and the Nearly New are a consignment thrift store where you can sell your personal goods through her as a third party vendor. The owner of the goods pays Diane a portion of the sale for facilitating the sale. Corn signers maintain the right to their property until the item is sold or abandoned. When we went thrifting while shooting, I saw a lot of clothes from um, the brand Country Road. And Country Road pants are usually at the flat rate of 1,000 Rand. And I got to have that for 45 Rand today. So that opportunity to have something that I'd really want on a normal day and can't afford, that's what thrifting is, is for me. It's indisputable. 
The thrifting movement brewing since the mid 2010s has become mainstream. Though fast fashion giants such as H&M, Shein and Zara haven't been toppled from their thrones, yet, the practice of buying used clothes formerly associated with low income lifestyle is now being destigmatized with the re-commerce industry. In recent years, the widespread diffusion of this already popular sentiment among the younger generation has been further catalyzed by social media. Buying secondhand not only offers the opportunity to get one-of-a-kind pieces for low prices, but is also an ethical alternative to first-hand clothes shopping in an era where corporate practices are placed under a microscope. There was actually a stigma around thrifting way back on, but I feel like it's going away now because the youth is getting into thrifting a lot because people assume that when you thrift you get like old clothes with like holes and stuff in them and yeah. you know like they had like an image in their mind that when someone thrifts they have a specific look that they have but like as times go on I feel like people are starting to realize that no thrifting is not about that because I mean, someone will come up to me, you know, I have a nice jacket, maybe a t shirt, and they're like, Where did you get this? Like, I thrifted. I'm like, oh, okay. So people are going to have conversations around those things. It's like, okay, fine, thrifting right now is not the same as maybe it was back then. So the stigma is going away, but I don't think it's gone away completely, but slowly but surely, you're getting to, to a point where I guess we can thank you for the education. As being judged now, everybody's like, okay, maybe they may also, like they always say, yeah. they first judge you and then they like shit. <laughs> it's actually cool. It's actually kind of slaps, bro. Let me just try it out, guy. Guy one, get the, get that shirt for 20 rand like that. I look yeah. good on the 20 rand t shirt. You go, you just the swag, oh, you just the swag, oh, you just the swag, you just the swag, you just the swag, oh. Oh, it's very difficult to pinpoint one thing, but I, I love the customers because they're all friends now. I've known them for so long. So there's always something, there's always a vibe in the shop. And um, people are great. They're good company and they love clothes. And I know them and I know what they like. So we help each other. Erico doesn't try and find only a limited sort of type, like type of clothing. It finds clothing that can be worn by anyone, but you're gonna tweak it for your own type of style. So, in a way, we try to include everyone who wants to, who is involved in the thrift culture and wants to buy stuff and maybe they can't afford certain items. So we try to bridge that gap, basically. Also, and man, thrifting makes you feel good, man. Thrifting makes you feel good because you know when you find that one t-shirt you're like yo okay finally got it. <laughs> find it, man. And like, I'm the only one who has this. So it's it's really also a feel good movement because yeah I feel like for me personally dressing nice makes me feel good. So we also try to put that emotion into other people. While the tide of thrifting continues to shift, the principle has not. While on this journey, I realized that each of us are part of this community created because people want to look good. There is a thread that brings us all together. Reggie's volunteer work with the SPCA, Diane and Area Code small businesses, and me. The thread of creating a sense of community, saving the environment, and a few cents, and looking great while doing it. You go, you the swag, oh, you the swag, oh. Get the swag, get the swag, get the swag, oh. Get, oh. You go, oh. get the swag, oh. Get the swag, oh. Get the swag, get the swag, get the swag, oh. Get, oh. You go, oh. get the swag, oh. Get the swag, oh. Get the swag, get the swag, get the swag, oh.